MasterChef has come to Ireland in search of the country's top amateur chefs. A gruelling process of challenges that will push each contestant to their very limits. It's the ultimate in cooking. And judging it will be two of Ireland's foremost culinary figures. Michelin star chef Dylan McGrath. This is testing their ability to produce food at a very high standard when the pressure's on. And restaurateur Nick Mounier. We never knew who was going to come through those doors. I mean, it's just been sort of one of those amazing journeys that you go through to see exactly who was going to shine out of all the people that we saw. From over a thousand applicants, now only eight remain, battling it out for the MasterChef Ireland title and the chance to win 25,000 euro in prize money. We've seen some rise. It's fabulous working with you and winning. And we've seen some fall. Thank you, Richard. But if you could leave the MasterChef kitchen now and take off your apron. They've taken on the much feared MasterChef palate test and they've cooked for the masses. Today, they must display a completely different set of skills as they face their very first five star challenge in Dublin's Shelburne Hotel. Who will have to hang up their MasterChef apron tonight? My number one achievement in my life, and I always say it, is, is my son. Um, he's everything to me, but yeah, besides that, I think MasterChef is probably the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. I think for everybody it's really hard to know who's going to win. I think we're all fairly pretty much at a level playing field, so I figure why not, you know, why wouldn't I be the one that goes forward and continues on? Obviously, like everyone in the last 16, they're here to win it, I think and I really would like to win it overall, but I'm not under any illusions about how difficult that's going to be. Good morning, guys. Morning. morning. Hope you're all well rested and ready for the next challenge. For the next couple of days, it's going to be all about pastry. This morning is your first masterclass, and it is with Roger Pisey. Roger trained for two years at the Gavroche in London with Albert Roux before joining Marco Pierre White as his chef pâtissier. As Marco was becoming the first British chef ever to be awarded three mission stars, Roger was creating groundbreaking desserts. Roger, what are you going to be doing for us today? Well, Nick, today I'm going to be making the caddo of chocolate, which was one of our signature dishes at the restaurant Marco Pierre White when we had our three stars. The Caddo de Chocolat incorporates many elements of classic pastry. There is a chocolate Genoise sponge on the bottom. On top of this is a mousse made using the challenging pâte à bombe technique. And it is served with caramelised hazelnuts and creme anglaise. This is where the thermometer comes in. I'm going to take this up to 121 degrees, which is hardball, basically. If you go too far over, what happens is when you, ha you mix it with your egg yolks, it's just going to go into solid lumps. You're going to start it all again, OK? Pastry cooking is an exact science, and each stage of the recipe must be followed rigidly. For the final and most challenging stage of the cadeau de chocolat, setting the chocolate on the acetate sheet. Surface temperature is vital. Roger uses a tray full of ice to ensure his countertop is cold enough to work on, but not too cold. I'm going to move it around a bit because I don't want just such a small area being so cold because it will just really, it will just set and you can't move it. This is where you take your time. I don't want it to set fully, otherwise I, can't, I won't get it off the surface. And I don't want it too soft, otherwise I can't work with it. Should just about meet. Can 
Carol chocolate mug if you want. The contestants will have one and a half hours and they are allowed three attempts to complete one to present to Dylan, Mick and Roger. What is the actual easiest part of this dessert? Cleaning down. <laughs> Definitely for this task, I have to actually slow down and stop myself because everything is so delicate. It's not rough and ready, it's not home cooking. You know, it's MasterChef, it's just beyond any level we've ever cooked at. From early on in the competition, occupational therapist Bree Jean's confidence and leadership skills have shone through. I actually have not one doubt in my head that we're going to win today. We owe it to her to be fair to tell her where she's wrong, yeah. because sometimes she thinks she's so right. Mm. Piers, do we have the celiac fish coming? Yeah, it's coming. How long will it be, though? It's, I've, I've asked. It's, it's on the way. Five minutes? It's on the way from the other... Yeah. Well, for this particular dish, I want to hand up exactly what he handed up. He's perfected that dish. I'm not going to be getting creative and, and changing any elements of it. Obviously, this is a dish that's been, you know, well thought out, well balanced flavours. While gentle giant Piers has always served up good, hearty, rustic food, precision and refinement are not his strong points. So the discipline of pastry will be a challenge for him. I don't really go for the molecular gastronomy stuff, all that fancy nonsense. I like good, honest food that's uh, cooked, cooked well. The pressure is a different kind of pressure to other tasks because you're looking for perfection here. You're not trying to get a lot of things done in a short space of time. You're looking for absolute perfection. Instead of using gelatin to set the mousse, it is a pat of bon. A sugar and water mixture boiled in a saucepan and brought to exactly 121 degrees. Good to go. Yeah, that'll do. This must then be carefully added to whisked egg yolks in three stages. The consistency and the setting of the mousse depends on doing this correctly. I mean, there obviously are different types of mousses. What Rogers chose today is a classic mousse that is suspended and aerated down to technique and fats. And it's, it's tough enough, though, to see no, something like that for the first time and all the different things that can go wrong and then, and then get into it on your own. You know, it really is the, the, the test of a soldier, I think. When adding the sugar syrup to the eggs, all the sugar must be fully combined. In order to do this, the mixer must be switched off each time the syrup is added. None of the contestants remember to switch off their machines. I remember stopping my machine when they added my sugar and then starting it again. Oh, should I? It just, it, it stopped. Now you get a lot more sugar on the outside. I only realise it after the sugar's after going hard. Yeah. There's no really way of saving that now, is there? No. Yeah. No, it's too late on that one. I noticed that Shane brought the two elements together really well. He just had his egg yolks at the right pace, and he just had his sugar at the right pace, and the two of them came together beautifully. So he has, in my opinion, the best base. Shane's previous dessert was a series highlight. However, his slow speed has always concerned Dylan. I just don't see Shane come out of his comfort zone enough, and it can be it can be a little bit frustrating. He's quite willing to just rest on his laurels and stay there. Criticism can be very personal, but I don't consider myself a chef. I'm a home cook, and I think what I've heard from them so far has been true, and I have to take that on board. I'm here to learn and keep my ears open. Guys, you have half an hour left. Christine was the overall winner in the taste test, and the judges have always been impressed by her multitasking and enthusiasm. But will her frantic mode of work be suited to the composed techniques needed for pastry? I think I've pushed myself so hard that sometimes I set myself up for a fall in some cases. I just strove ahead. I was just so eager and so, like, really wanted to get things done that I just might have lost track of myself, I think. Just completely spiffed. All right, will I go again? I would. I, I would. Eggs, shit. 
fuck. After my creme anglaise had split, I was just really disappointed and then totally lost my mind frame, I think, and just went, just like, how am I going to rectify this? How am I going to rectify this? I had three things going at one time and just my head was all over the place. Once the mousse is set, it needs to be removed from its mold with the help of a blowtorch. But only a stable mousse will stand up once the mold is taken away. I thought I was managing my time really well. It seemed to be cracking along nicely until I went to take the mold off and it just went bleh. <laughs> Hadn't said at all, so I was a bit worrying. Pierce still has two more attempts left, but must make sure the mousse sets this time so it goes back in the fridge. I thought I was going along nicely today, and then I just looked around and saw people ahead of me, and I was there going, my god, it's not where I should be. I was there going, oh no, I'm not up to speed again. Mary is the first to attempt the chocolate shell. Did you not do any ice on your surface? Pardon? You don't put any ice on it, on the here. Oh, sh That's why your chocolate's too wet, too okay. soft, it's not setting. So you've got two more goes, but just take your time with okay. it. Just get it round now, keep it. Oh. Bridgine is also having trouble with the chocolate shell. Oh, jeez. Well, it's too wet. Yeah, it's too wet. You know, I would just take it in, just put it into the fridge, and just go with your second one, yeah? Should be this way. You're wrong. No. You're wrong. There's no way that'll fit around that. That's because that's gone down. It should be up like that, you see. That's wrong. Yeah, it's wrong because that's that's white now. No. Look at them. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. You need that length to get okay. round that. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay, sorry. Ultimately, columns running into sugar. Problems the sugar? Of the sugar. Yeah, it's not, it's not setting at all. And Piers is having a massive problem with his mooses. They're just absolutely nowhere near. Nowhere near at all. Okay. Breeding seems to have half sponge to half moose. Yeah, I've seen that. It's just doorsteps. Hmm. Guys, you have one minute left. I went through two mooses before I got one that worked. And I had to use an acetate without white chocolate on it, so there's just dark chocolate. My chocolate shell around around the mousse as well. There's a hole in the side of it and it's not sealed up properly. It's far from a perfect dish. At the end, when you put your head up, you look around and you see what people have on the plate. And I was there going, oh my God, all the others look so well. And look, I'm not happy with that dish at all. I, you know, I wouldn't serve it to anybody. OK, guys, time is up. Everybody step back. Pierce is first up to face Dylan, Nick, and Roger. Thank you. So, Pierce, tell me about your afternoon. I thought it was going OK until, uh, until the moose wouldn't set. Mm. And I've since realised what the, the problem was. I think I, when I was making the pate bomb, mm -hmm. I poured the sugar in while the mixer was going. Yeah. So it was spinning the sugar to the outside of the bowl instead of going into the mix and there wasn't enough of it in there, so it took too long to set. And because of that, I was rushed at the end. So, yeah, it does look like a bit of a mess. I think that um, the mousse isn't as bad as I thought it was. You worked really well. You actually really surprised me. You were out in front. You showed real confidence with the caramel, which I was watching. I think you were one of the ones that took it the furthest, which showed some, some, some I thought, some, some understanding. Next up is Mary. Nice marbling. Again, the thickness of your sponge is good. Yeah, I'm happy. Thank you. Connell now needs to present his cadeau de chocolat. I think you struggle quite a bit because you're just rushing, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I was concentrating on the time and I just wanted to get one done, so I think I probably could have just spent a bit more time in the mousse and got it in a little bit earlier, I think. You lost a bit of sugar, I think, on the side of your bowl as well, no? 
when you made in your patter bomb. Right, okay. It seems to be quite a bit missing. Did it? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this part of it was just executed. Yeah, it's, it, it's not good at all, let's be honest. The, the chocolate on the acetate. Yeah, without the yeah, white. No, yeah. yeah, not just the white, though, also the, the execution. I mean, if you remember, Roger cupped his in there. That really is a case of understanding the temperature of the acetate. Yeah, Really definitely. making that finishing touch and working from the fridge. I mean, they're the finer details of the dish that just aren't there. I'd say I'm going to put myself around a seven or eight. Hopefully, I'll pull it off quite well. And if I can do as good as Roger, I'll just sleep very well tonight. I'll be very happy. You don't want to let anyone down. You don't let yourself down. So it's important to perform well and, and follow exactly what he did. What have we got here? We have your dessert. Do we have my dessert? Kind do of. we have your dessert? It's probably not. You have it still, Linda. Yeah. yeah. And you've got nice marbling. OK. What is this? That was me trying to, to do what? cover up the end, the bottom bit that was exposed because I didn't get the chocolate down. So you got, I just wonder, what, I don't remember doing chopped nuts. No, you didn't. didn't. I didn't do that. OK. Sorry about that. Well, I just... Yeah. The thing about doing desserts, we, you know, to show you what I do and how I make it is to represent it. It's not easy. But then, to add your own garnish, I don't really see the point of that. OK, sorry about that, Roger. Your sponge is too thick. I think with everything going on, you just kept to the drill. OK. Ultimately, the mousse is light. Um, the sponge is too thick. Uh, Anglaise is certainly overcooked. Caramel is, is, is fine. I, yeah, I think you could have done a better job of your wrap. I think other people did. And then, as Roger said, you know, chopped nuts on top. It's kind of not the brief. So get it right first before you start adding your own twists would be my, yeah. OK. I felt like I let them down, basically. You know, Roger has put a lot of work into that dish, so, you know, you want to try and present him up his dish in an acceptable manner. Crushing. Crushing. I can't make any excuses. You know, Roger put forward a really amazing dish and, yeah, I would have liked to do better for him, so. Mike's creme anglaise split and was not up to the judges' high standards. Creme anglaise, I make it so much at home and my wife loves it, it's her favourite thing. And then I come here and I turn it around, boom, gone. Uh, oh, it's, it's, that's heart-wrenching more than anything. <laughs> yeah. And in the end, Shane struggled with presentation. <laughs> that's what we can call it. I'm not happy with the presentation. Good. Thank God for that. Yes. Yeah. I was expecting you to come out and do some amazing acetate and it was going to be perfect and it just looks like a derelict house and it's just unfortunate. A calm Claire-Anne presents her efforts. I like, this, I like the cover. I like the marble. Yeah. It's a lot neater than a lot of the others. We've almost got it sealed around the back. Mm -hmm. Nice marbling on the outside, Claire-Anne. Mousse inside is one of the best we've seen. Yep. Without a doubt. Balance is there. Chocolate is there. I'm going to sugar rush now, but I absolutely <laughs> love it. Well done. Thank you very much. You were running around like yeah. a mad person. <laughs> um, and you just felt on your you know, flat because it, it, it was just too, too running. Everything was just too, going too fast. Mm. So, in future, just take your time. I think it was a big learning curve for me today as well. Just understanding the way I work and going forward, and that I don't rush things, you know, take a step back, you know, just really focus on the finer detailing of things. The pastry challenge doesn't end there. Tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., you'll be greeted by Gary Hughes of the Shelburne Hotel, where each of you will be responsible for one pastry dish. And you will be hosting afternoon tea for some of the country's finest bakers and pastry chefs.
So good luck, and we'll see you all tomorrow morning. And I'd like to thank Roger Pizzi, my good friend. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, the final eight contestants had their first MasterChef Masterclass with Roger Pizzi. Today, their pastry skills will be challenged to the maximum as they enter the daunting five-star kitchens of Dublin's Shelburne Hotel. Earlier in the competition, Mary's messiness and lack of organization were noted by Dylan and Nick. You can't, you can't work in that mess and produce clean food. Can you imagine that she has to cook for 12 people yeah. and she gets six desserts on the go. Yeah. Where are they going to go? I'm going to have to try and, you know, create very flavorful food and I'm going to have to also be more organized in how I, how I work. You can't be chaotic, there's no room for it, so um, that's what I'm, I'm going to really focus on. Gary Hughes is the executive chef in the Shelburne Hotel. He began his culinary career at the age of 15 in the very same kitchens which he now oversees. We've been serving afternoon tea here in the Shelburne, not myself, but we've been serving it for over 180 years. I've had the privilege and the honour for doing it for the last three years, and today it's up to you. Okay, so we're going to recreate one of the pastries that's in front of you to serve to our guests. If it is not right, I will not serve it, okay? When we're going for service, it's very important that we're all finished. Make sure you're on that plate. If you're not on that plate, that's not my problem. Now, I expect everyone to wear hats and I expect all my chefs to be clean shaven. You haven't shaved this morning, chef. You haven't shaved. You're in a professional kitchen now. You're in my kitchen. You'll walk the way I want you to walk. Claire Anne's dishes can be quite original and innovative, combining unusual flavours. If you didn't think cherries and quail are done a lot, <laughs> yeah, okay. it's my, hopefully, hopefully a good concept. But can she follow a stringent, uncompromising pastry recipe? I'm hoping that cooking afternoon tea will mean that um, we get to um, do some stuff that shows some kind of subtlety and finesse, which I think um, my cooking could do with. Conversely, Mike's strength has always been in following recipes with exact precision, and his tart tatin was Nick's dish of the day at the foodies' dinner. A classic tart tatin done beautifully, so he should be very proud of himself and hats off to him, it's, be it's beautiful. You got a big red face now because I'm using my non-standard shaving kit. My wife hasn't seen this beard up since I met her. It's very important you read the recipes. You follow them to the gram. If it says 800 grams, it's 800 grams, not 805, not 790. There's a reason why there's a weight on it. If it doesn't work, you haven't weighed it out correctly. Also on the contestants' recipe cards today is how long each step should take. And Gary has added some time to allow for the fact that they are not professionals. The high tea today in a five-star hotel, there's a massive standard that we have to meet. You know, you know that no, your dessert is not going to be served if it's not up to scratch. Those guys, I have a head start on us now. Right, guys, what you have in front of you are their little black bins, OK? As I do in the kitchen, I monitor all the stuff my guys throw in the bin because it's money in the bin. So at any time, I will empty your bin on your section to see what you're throwing out. Okay. This is cooking like I've never done before. This is a totally different league. Thank you. Are you using this? I will be, yeah. Can I get the scales next, um, Mary, when you're finished? Yeah. Thanks, Pip. Go on and use a spatula. I couldn't find one, Chef. They didn't right, have go one. Go and find a spatula. Can I take the weighing scales? Yeah. No, no, sorry. Yeah. Mary, when you're finished, can I get the scales from your feet? Yeah. Sure. Can I take that soap, Pierce? I need a spatula. Mary is making the chocolate orange mousse. I felt okay until I realised that we only had one mixer. Queen, can, I, can you call me can, can I, when, when it's ready, when the mixer's free? Can, or can you, oh, sorry, Benedict, can you call me when the mixer's free so that I can get on with doing other stuff? I was panicked um, and I, I think I let that affect the way I operated today in the kitchen. I, I'm never going to get this done. There was a moment where I actually did nearly kind of just break down because the pressure was getting to me. Everyone's fighting for the same equipment. Uh, 
Is that? No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely next. Um, I'm not. After Shane. Yeah. Um, I, I won't get mine done. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, you go ahead. Just wait as soon as I'm after you, okay? Yeah. I'm waiting. Right, guys. I want you to stop what you're doing, okay? Right. All I can see is panic. Relax, okay? If you're panicking, you're not thinking straight, okay? Step back and relax. Mary, I want you to calm down, okay? I understand we're all trying to share equipment, but that's what a real kitchen is like. It's only food, it's not rocket science. We're not going saving somebody's life. Bridgine is making a raspberry vanilla macaroon. All people think macaroons are hard to make, and they are. I've looked at recipes, I know they're intimidating, and I suppose not even being able to have an understanding of, okay, what consistency am I looking for? That's really, really difficult, because you're almost just trying to have an intuit intuition about it, but when you haven't experienced it before, there is no intuition. Right, guys, 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 step back from your section. Look at where you're working. Do you think that looks like a professional chef? Christine looks like a professional chef. The rest of you look like you're working on the farm. This isn't how we work. Go and look at Christine, that's how a chef works. You're in my kitchen, you work tidy. We take it back, let's go. Today I really felt in my comfort zone. I really just settled in, really focused, and just really calm, and just enjoyed it. And I didn't panic. I felt if I panicked, you know, things can go wrong. I lose track of my recipe, you know. Things can easily turn upside down, and you end up burning things. What are you going to do with that, Chef? What are you going to do with it's that? It's going to go in the freezer, Chef. What are you going to do with this? I'm going to wash that out. You're going to wash it out. You're going to get a spatula in there. You're going to scrape it out. With the last bit, out. OK, that's money in the bin. OK, yes, Chef. Spatula, Chef. Spatula, yes, not chef. a spoon. You know what a spatula is? Yes, Chef. And then let's get one. Pierce has been tasked today with the strawberry and yogurt mousse. Right, the knife. Let the knife do the work. Okay? Yep. Serrated edge. Mike is making a chocolate frangipan with raspberry cream. We need to go into a kitchen and deal with the problems that arise and, and try to predict what's going to happen. What, do, what equipment do we need? What ingredients do we need? What processes do we need to go through? I think the time for you know, showing us around and holding our hands is over. Unbeknownst to him, he has used a carton of just egg yolks instead of whole eggs for the frangipan. There's one or two individuals that seem to be way ahead. Christine, who's behind me, seems to be in my opinion, in the first hour here, showing them how to work. A bit concerned with uh, Connell. I'm firstly showing up to the kitchen not properly formed by not shaving, and, and just actually concentrating on the job. Connell is making a coffee praline crunch. I'm pretty confident that I can finish the dish in time, you know, I just need to work through it. I've got the main thing in the freezer already, which is the, the creme anglaise, so that was an important thing to get done. I just need to keep working fast, though. There's no, you can't have done or trying to slip up. Shane is making a pistachio financier cake with milk chocolate and caramelised apricots. My desserts are gorgeous desserts, so I really want to do it justice, especially since I didn't do the last presentation justice, so I want to get this right. Connell, are you finished with the cream? Just are you finished with the eggs? Yes, put them back in the fridge. Yeah, you put them in the fridge. Yeah. You want to poison yeah. someone? Yeah. Put them in the fridge. Where have you had the pot? There. So is the bottom of the pot hot? Uh, yes, Chef. Is that plastic? Okay, I thought it was all right. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let, let's think it about is. it now, common sense. Yeah. Claire-Anne has moved on to making an almond creme for her cherry almond and white chocolate slice. Yeah. Fuck. How are you getting on there? Yeah, um, OK. Don't scrape the bottom of the pan, though. It's burnt. OK, it's split. Right. And it's curdled, OK? OK, well then... So you need to throw it in the bin. Yeah. And you need to start again. OK, I okay. shall. And you really need to... to make a shovel and okay. OK. It was really difficult after I'd made a really big mistake and I think although I didn't 
outwardly show too much of a panic. I really was panicking quite a bit inside. I knew that I'd lost over half an hour's worth of time. I think it was closer to 40 minutes I'd spent and I just couldn't work out with maths how I was going to get everything finished in time. I had one on my station. Did anyone take a paddle mixer from the... Right guys, we have an hour and a half to service time. Yeah? Think about where you are. Have a look at the recipe, see the time, add up all the times together. And if it's more than a half, an hour and a half, you need to take your head out of where the sun doesn't shine and move, yeah? Yes, chef. Okay, let's go now, let's pick it up. Yes. I know I said take your time, but I didn't, I didn't mean that you'd fall asleep. Pineapple, five minute job, you're finished. Move on. I'm a bit concerned that we're going to make it on time. Uh, Mary, Claire Ann, Connell, Pierce. But they're actually putting this on themselves. Yeah, of course. You know? yeah. They came in, took their time, they'd be well ahead now. Yeah. They'd be having a nice, relaxed kitchen, but at the moment... So what, what do you think they're doing? They're panicking, they're, they're, panicking. they're working frantically, they're, yes. they're, they're, they're under pressure, they're, they're not... They're their own worst enemies. Shane did something which is detrimental to anybody who has a business. He was weighing the sugar, and the sugar that he didn't need, he was putting it in the bin. What are you doing? Wasting your sugar. Why are you throwing that in the bin for? Why wouldn't you put it back in there? Because I thought, it, okay, I will, in the future. I thought you didn't. When you walk in the kitchen, you multiply everything by five, that's how much money you've lost. Okay? Okay. Come Sorry, on, guys. Chef. Yep. Sorry, it doesn't mean anything, Chef. Don't do it again. Okay. Mary, you need to come in. There's inductions inside. Okay. Right, Mary, there's an induction yeah, here. Yeah, I'm coming, yeah. Yeah. Mary, Mary, Mary. Right? No, 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 you, no, 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 no. Yeah, I need for just a second to pierce Mary. Yeah. I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. Your orange marmalade is burnt. Start again, throw it out. You're not concentrating, you've let it burn. Throw it out, yeah, can't yeah, be yes, used. Chef. Yes, chef. yes, chef, yes, chef. Oranges. Give me oranges. There was a moment today where I just thought, I was going to cry. I was really, really close to it because the pressure was huge and I could see I could see it slipping through my fingers. I could feel it, just the whole thing, just unravelling. So I think I do want it more than ever, really, because I'm going through this in order to pursue something I really, really want to do. Chef? Throw it out, throw it out, it's burnt. Throw it out, don't even ask me, throw it out. Yes, Chef. Okay. You're not concentrating on what you're doing. You've taken your eye off it and no, it's burnt. I actually, I, uh... Chef, to be fair to me, this was... Mary, to be fair to you, I'm not going to be fair to you. You're working in an absolute mess. No, you Chef, to be fair, look, this is my station here. It's not a little mess. This is my station here. Conversation's over. This is a mess. Okay, sorry. This is a mess. Conversation's over. Yes, Chef. Right guys, we've 20 minutes to start plating, okay? You need to be cleaning down, you need to be putting the finishing touches to your pastries and you need to be giving them to me, okay? At this stage now, if you're not ready, you're not going to be ready. Oh, shit. I put the mousse into the fridge rather than the freezer. You know, I had read the recipe, but I saw I saw fridge for freezer, so you know I should have I should have just been a bit more careful there. He was a bit too relaxed, and he wasn't watching the time. And a, a two-hour exercise now is four and a half hours, and he's not finished. You should you should melt this over a bain marie. So you'd never melt chocolate in a pot. Okay. Okay. So start again. Okay. okay. It's very difficult when you're disappointed in yourself and your work to try and keep going and come back from that. If you stop, you can let yourself become too emotional or too frantic. I'm, I'm pushed for time. Thanks. I need, to, I need to start the mousse. Do you want help with your cherries? I'm done. Do you yes. want, what do you want me to do to them? Chop them, please. Thank you, Mike. That's really kind of you. Shane must make quinelles with his chocolate mousse. Gary, however, isn't happy with them. No, no, no. If you give me that, I'm going to give it back to you. Fair enough. It's a hot spoon. Bang, on it goes. It took me ages to get it right, doing it with one spoon. I never met a Cornell before. At what stage did you put the gelatine in this? I put it on the wrong stage, Gary. Put it on the wrong stage. That's why it's not Cornell. This is what happens when you don't follow the recipe. 
It's definitely a science. You have to follow it by the book to the letter of the law. So that's where I went wrong. The Lord Mayor's Lounge will be filled with pre-invited guests, the country's leading pastry experts. They are hungry and have high expectations. You just can't ad lib with pastry. You have to do it exactly as you're taught um, and according to a recipe. And you also have to have a certain touch. So I think it's going to be very difficult for a lot of them to get it right. It takes years of practice. It's a little bit different to cooking. It's, a, it's, you know, it's an exact amount of ingredients that creates the cake, and then you have to split it and fill it. So that's what I would be looking for, that they can split it straight and they can portion it dead on so that each one is identical. That's the secret. The lemon meringue tart, in a way, is, is quite a good challenge because you have the sugar crust pastry, which needs to be absolutely perfect and short and crumbly, and then you should have a perfect lemon curd, and then this light, fluffy meringue on top. In France, uh, the financier is like a madeleine. Nothing is more perfect than my grandmother made before, you know. Macaroons is something that I'm really looking forward to trying. I've won a lot of awards for my macaroons, so I'm quite keen to see what they come out with. The feet is something that I'm really looking forward to see if they master that. Can they get the little feet on the bottom of those, those macaroons? It's an afternoon tea in the Shelburne. It has to be perfect. Today, our final eight MasterChef contestants are in the Shelburne Hotel, making afternoon tea for some of the country's most acclaimed bakers and patissiers. Each contestant has a pastry to complete, and the first service is about to go out. Bridgine is first to finish with her macaroon, but will it be good enough to serve? This is what it should be. Yep. This is the size it is. It needs to be a bit smaller, OK? OK, but, but well done for being the first finished, OK? OK, thanks, Chef. I don't know if I've done enough. Again, I, I think yesterday was so bad that I'd say my next on the line. Christine has also finished her lemon meringue on time. Pastry's a little bit thick, OK? And we've talked about that. You know we have gone wrong on that. Yeah. Today, what worked for me that I made the deadline was that I didn't panic. I didn't run around the place. I've learned in the past that's not how to do it. Mike is next to finish with his chocolate frangipan. But after using egg yolks instead of whole eggs, it's a completely different cake. Can you do me a favour, OK? Yes, Chef. If I'm going to serve this today, OK? and you're lucky enough to get through to the next stage, yes, OK? Chef. You do not give the next chef this, yes, chef. OK? Yep. Shane is next with his pistachio financier. OK, so your sponge... Looks drier. Does it look drier than this yes, one? It does, chef. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Often. You don't know? i tell you why. You didn't follow the recipe. With only four pastries ready, Claran, Mary, Pierce and Connell have all failed to plate up for the first service. The four that have completed the task, I wouldn't get too excited. It's about 70% of what it should be. Would I serve it if I was in my normal kitchen today? Probably not. Baking veterans Rachel and Myrtle Allen are the first to try the afternoon tea. Oh my goodness, four, four so only half of them completed. We'll be hungry. <laughs> mm. I was expecting the, the frangipan. I think to be a slightly different texture. Yeah. This is the raspberry and vanilla macaron. Can you see the little um, the little layer of raspberry jelly? Really intense raspberry jelly on top of it. Well set. Mm. I really like that. So do I. Do you? First class. Yeah. Back in the kitchen, it's time for the second and third service. And again, only four pastries are ready to go out. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the macaroon. The presentation was absolutely stunning. It wasn't quite what I was expecting in terms of a traditional macaroon, but it was a really nice surprise. Um, the workmanship is excellent, and I have to say, really rather professional. The lemon meringue had a lot of crust. Do you know, it was almost like a lemon cookie or a lemon biscuit, I suppose. The meringue probably could have been cooked a little bit more. I, I felt it was a little undercooked. It was more like a marshmallow. They have to be focused and they have to go through stages and steps and, and time things appropriately. If somebody's late, it's, it's unacceptable. You know, it's, it's, a, it's not a level playing field at that stage. Coming up to the fourth service, the contestants are still four desserts short. Gary is less than impressed, serving yet another incomplete afternoon tea. It's a bit disappointing. 
being a five star hotel, five star establishment, we have standards and we've come short today. The meringue, I find it's a little disappointing. It's more like something you might buy in a, in a supermarket, six in a, in a packet. I am impressed for the, the financier, the combination with the caramel and the, the chocolate. It's, it's perfect. And uh, maybe a little bit too, pistachio is a little bit strong, but it's not bad. Back in the kitchen, now an hour late for service, Mary is still struggling with her pastry. There's no sign of Pierce or Connell's dessert, but Claire Anne's cherry almond and white chocolate mousse is finally ready. We may be an hour late, but I'm really happy that you've, you've put your head down, you didn't let it deter you, and you served this. It's still very, very disappointing, you know, to have put that amount of effort in and realised that you've not completed the task, but it's satisfying that actually something got out to people and was deemed good enough to go out. You know, it's a little bit kind of um, like a trifle or something almost. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a strong... No. The mousse was nice, um, definitely no complaints about it in terms of flavour, but it just didn't stand up to the rest of the desserts. The presentation of it didn't match whatever else was served to us, so it just felt it was that little bit lacking. The chocolate frangipan with the raspberry cream is by far the most disappointing. Um, I would, if I was a paying customer at the Shelburne, I would be not happy. For the penultimate service, Connell and Pierce have yet again failed to make the cake stand. It's okay for most of the service, but once again, it looks like I'm gonna be caught out by the moose. Same as yesterday, uh, mousse isn't setting in time, and I think because of that, my dessert is going to be the last one going out. And after a very long morning, Mary is finally getting there. I have a tendency in, in everything I do when there's groups of people, I, I stand back and I get overwhelmed by the panic. I didn't envisage that as a problem. I didn't envisage my nerves as being a problem. I just thought maybe I would have something to do that I wasn't, you know, it was too technical. Um, beyond my capabilities, but actually each of the different elements I was able to do, that wasn't a problem. It was just the pressure surrounding all of that was what got, got to me. I'm really, really focusing on that now, going forward. Moose is well made, it's well, a lot of air in it. Yeah, it hasn't overly set. It's yeah. not that kind of, sometimes it's almost yeah. like jelly that it's so Sponge solid. Sponge maybe a little bit dry. Timing is obviously an issue and it's something, working in a professional kitchen, it, it's one of the most important things and that's something that they'll have to learn. Like you, you can't keep guests waiting. Eventually, an hour and a half late, Pierce and Connell have just about made the last service. This means that only one full afternoon tea went out to the Shelburne guests. Do you think an hour and a half is acceptable? Of course it's not acceptable, no. Absolutely not, not acceptable at all. I felt bad that I only got one plate out. Certainly, uh, I think that's not good enough. This dessert takes two and a half hours to do. It's after taking you five and a half hours. You can blame 101 things, but at the end of the day, the dish is designed to be produced in a certain time period, and if you can't get it out, then it's really the fault of the chef. Our first full afternoon tea of the day. I think above all, definitely the, um, the coffee praline crunch was delicious, hands down. It looked spectacular and it tasted spectacular as well. One of the ones that I loved the flavour the most was the strawberry and yoghurt mousse. That's probably the one I'll remember the most. Shane is quite a messy worker. He didn't follow the recipe. He added in the gelatine too early. There was some robed bits of gelatine where it hadn't been cooked out correctly. Would I have been happy with his dessert today? No. With, with Mike today, he, he made a quite simple mistake where he used egg yolk instead of whole eggs. And it was quite crumbly. It wasn't really nice to eat. I think with Pierce, if he would have finished on time today, I would have said, yeah, He's head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah. But it took him nearly an hour to dice a pineapple. Mm. Connell, I think he was very at ease. He was standing over a pot, stirring the cream, watching the world go by. I was very concerned where it showed quite clearly the mousse should have been going into the freezer a half an hour into this morning, and it was only going in two hours later. That was a core element today of a lot of the competitors. Mm. They didn't follow the recipe and they actually stopped me during the day to say, oh, I know I didn't do the recipe right. So I'm like, well, 
what you expect, guys. That was the key element that as well. That was the key element I today. mean, this is, this is the difference, and we've came across it before in other tasks. It's fine at home if you don't follow the recipe, you can patch it together. But when you're standing in the Shelburne kitchen, doing the pastries for, for, for afternoon tea. It's just, it has to be right. To come today and to, to kind of be aware halfway through, I haven't really read the recipe, is... Um, it's a worry, isn't it? It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Being eliminated from MasterChef would be really tough for me at the moment. I've come this far now that I just don't want it to end. I'd really, really, really like to continue. This is definitely my most difficult task to date. Pastry and desserts is definitely my weakest area in the kitchen, so I found it a tough challenge. Hi, guys. Dylan. Trying to, at this point, give you some feedback in terms of progression. If you're going away from this, feeling like time was against you or you didn't have the right equipment or any of these things that um, possibly you might be using as excuses instead of reality. Um, I think it's really important that now we, we, we highlight this, I feel. Us moving forward, putting you in different kitchens is all part of this competition. We haven't even started yet, let's be honest. So, you going into a kitchen, you know, a master chef level and not reading a recipe correctly, it's just breathtaking. I have to say, if you don't understand that recipe, you won't be able to execute it. If you don't understand where it's going to fall down, you won't be able to anticipate a problem before it happens. That's what a chef is. Eight of you cooked today in the Shelburne. Four of the pastries were ready in time for the service, and four were not. The four of you who made pastries for the first service be please stand over there. And the four of you that didn't, Claire Anne and Mary, you both burnt elements of your dish, a delay that eventually cost you a lot of time. However, Feeling that lessons were learnt and that you eventually pulled back your dish, even though there was a delay, we feel you should join the other group. Pierce, Connell, you finally made the last service, but you were an hour and a half late, which is unacceptable. If there were paying guests, they will have left the restaurant. Connell, they haven't not read the recipe. Actually having the mousse in the fridge, I think it was half 10, half 10, by the time it went in the freezer, by the time it was in the moulds, just expecting so much more from you. Pierce, apparently word came back that if you had been, if somebody had a fast forward button on you, today it would have been okay. An hour to chop pineapple nearly. On the strength of that, Connell, that's the end of the competition. Thanks. Pierce. You must stay in the competition, so can I ask you to join the group, please? Thank you. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Scraped through by the skin of my teeth, yeah. Relieved, a little bit puzzled. Was, I was convinced I was going home. My whole life is kind of, you know, to do with food and cooking, so to get the validation of being in the final seven of MasterChef is to this stage a huge achievement for me. I think I learned today that, you know, I've had a narrow escape and I need to just keep my head down and not get distracted and get, get, let, let the pressure get to me. I'm competitive, I like to go to the end, I like to win. And that's what I'm here for, none of us are here to come second. I'd love to finish this journey and be the winner of MasterChef Ireland, it'd be phenomenal. 
It would have meant everything. Every time you go through, it, you know, it means the world. And, you know, I really felt I could win it. I wouldn't have been here if I didn't feel I could win it. There's nothing I'd like more than to be back in there right now. You know, I changed my whole life to do this program. I stopped my job. So to go out now and not to be able to progress and let people see what I can do and to possibly go on and win it means that I have to completely rethink on what I'm going to do with my life. Actually, no, I don't think the judges made the right decision today. I can understand the decision, but personally, I don't think it was the right one. Next time on MasterChef. Can I have two fish and two guinea fowl, please? Yes. The contestants face their biggest challenge yet. I've lost the orders. Cooking for paying customers. Finish it, finish yeah. it. You have 15 minutes. And not everyone has what it takes. Oh, shit. I don't know why she cares that much if she's going to produce such bad food.